today, let's talk about what to do when you don't know what to do. Many a times, we get into a situation where we don't know what to do. And we can't understand what to do. During that situation, what to do is a good, it's a big problem. And we stuck at a junction and we don't know where to go. We sometimes uh, stuck in a crossroad and we don't know where to go. So today let's talk about what to do when you don't know. One thing we need to remember from the Bible, Joshua chapter 1 verse 9 says, Do not be discouraged. Do not be terrified. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. The first thing that we need to do is we need to encourage ourselves. We should never get discouraged when we don't know what to do. We should get encouraged by ourselves and we try to focus on something to do. First, I give you some tips. The first thing what we need to do is uh, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. You can't figure out the whole future. You need to say to yourself, it's okay. Something went wrong. I don't know what to do. But um, you need to say to yourself that I will continue to do something that God expects me to do. It's okay. Life is not going to end up with that. There are a lot of opportunities to come. Joseph never thought things go wrong with him. Such a wonderful boy. His parents loved him so much. He has 11 brothers, big joint family, of course, uh, a wealthy family. And uh, he's such a wonderful boy. He studies well, he's growing, and he was obedient and hardworking in nature. And he was able to see the visions and the dreams from heaven. God gave him dreams. Those dreams brought trouble to him. His brothers were jealous of him. They did all things that they wanted to do. They would kill him and threw him in a pit and sold him as a slave to the Egyptians. And he ended up in Egyptian house, 44th house, as a slave boy. And he was being mistreated by his uh, mistresses in the home. And he was blamed and thrown into in prison. He was in prison and with all these packages. He never got discouraged. He might have been perplexed and he would have thought what to do when I don't want to, when I don't know what to do. For one thing, he looked to God. In all situations, he looked to God in faith and he had that courage and confidence. That's the reason. Wherever he was put up, he looked to God. And God started blessing him. The Bible says, the hand of the Lord was on Joseph, so he was prospered. When we don't know what to do, we need to look to God. And one thing that we need to do, we need to put our hope in God. God will take us to the next stage and he will open doors. Number two, when we don't know what to do, we need to understand that we need to try to be comfortable with discomfort. You may ask me a question. How can I be comfortable with the discomfort? It's very simple. When you are thrown into, into a dungeon where it's so dark, initially it's difficult for you to understand where you are. And you can't, you, you see nothing in that darkness. But without getting disturbed, if you pull yourself and if you wait some time in the darkness, slowly your eye starts getting adjusted to the darkness. You will be able to see even in the darkness. That's what I want to say. It's okay. You can't figure out the whole future. It's okay. You can't figure out the whole future. 
you know, when when things go wrong with us, we get perplexed and we get disturbed about the future. We worry and we don't know what to do. Fear of insecurity comes. In that time, we need to wait in God. Darkness is a darkness in all the days of our lives. There will be a day. Even in the darkness, you will be able to see if you heighten yourself in the presence of God. That's what happened to Joseph. In that dark period, when there was so much darkness, unexpected incidents, unexpected storms of life, he was able to hope in God. He was able to see God even in the midst of that horrible situation. God was able to show his kindness to him. So that's what I want to say. Try to be comfortable with discomfort. Try to be comfortable with discomfort. Yes, you are surrounded by discomfort and situation. You expected something but uh, something happened, you expected that your children will be so good and your family life will be fantastic and you will enjoy your life. There will be so much future and prosperity and adventures and so many things. But when you get into the married life and when something happened to your children, something happened to the family, all your visions are shattered and dreams are gone and you don't know what to do, but I want to check you. Get adjusted to that darkness. Yet, try to be comfortable with discomfort. It was discomfortable situation for those in the dungeon of Egyptian jails, imprisonment. But David settled himself. He was comfortable in that discomforting situation of the imprisonment. As a result, we read in the Bible, Joseph was able to help all of them in the prison. He was administering and he became an administrator even in the prison. He was cheerful. He was able to counsel others. That's the reason these two people came from the palace of Pharaoh and they were imprisoned and they were perplexed. They were gloomy and Joseph was able to ask them, why are you so gloomy? They said they got dream. Now, Joseph was able to give interpretation of the dreams of the people even in the imprisonment. He himself was a prisoner. And if he was so gloomy and thought all the time cursing his life and discouraging, he would not have seen the glory of God even in that imprisonment. It's the secret of success. Even in Apostle Paul and Silas, when they were thrown into prison, you know, they were in the prison, the book of Acts. Help us to understand that these two individuals started worshipping, praising, singing songs, making melody in their hearts. In, and a matter of fact, they do not know what they want to do, what they need to do. But they looked into God and they started singing, praising in God. When they try to, um, when they are getting adjusted to that situation, they try to be comfortable in that discomforting, discomforting imprisonment. The prison walls have been broken. The Bible clearly says there was an earthquake and the walls have been broken. And the official of the jailer was about to commit suicide because he thought all the, in, in, the inmates of the prison are gone and uh, he will be in threat. But Paul looked at him and said, don't harm yourself, we are here. You know, try to be comfortable with the, with the discomfort. That's what I wanted to encourage you. It's difficult. But when you try to be uh, comfortable with the discomfort, you will see an open door from God. The third thing I wanted to encourage you, life is uncertain. Go with it. Life is uncertain. Go with it. There is no guarantee what will happen tomorrow. Uncertainties are at the door. Uncertainties do happen in our lives. Life is not all the time smooth. All the time you will receive only good things. No. Job looked at God when everything is lost. When he lost everything and finally he looked at God. 
But his wife looked at him and said, curse God and die. Why do you want to still hold on to God? Why do you want to be comfortable in this discomforting situation? Job was trying to comfort himself in that discomforting situation. But his wife says, come curse God and die. But no, Job looks at her, his wife and says, have we received any difficulties from God? Do we need to receive only good all the time? And says, God gave and God took. Praise be to God. Praise be to God. Praise be to God. You know, God is always there with us. Uncertainties do come. Your dreams will be shattered and you will be thrown to the darkness. But let me tell you, life is uncertain. Go with it. Jesus never promised a kind of comfortable life to his disciples. And a matter of fact, he said, if anybody would come up to me, he would deny himself daily and follow me. The followers of Jesus do expect uncomfortable situations. In the first century, history of first century, AD, people were thrown into the galleries. The lions were open. The, the, uh, the people used to sit around the gallery. They were killed. And it was a horrible persecution happened in the first century. That's the reason we have a slogan, the blood of the martyrs, the seed of the church. Today, what? we didn't have any persecution much. We are really comfortable. We, we should praise God for the way that God is, has blessed us. Life is uncertain. Go with it. And number four, overcome distractions and stop procrastinating. Overcome distractions and stop procrastination. Procrastination is a big enemy in our lives. Procrastination is a big enemy in our lives. Never procrastinate. Ask yourself questions. All of them. Discomfort. Distractions. And stop procrastinating. See, we wanted to do something and that doesn't happen. And we visualize that God will do something and that doesn't happen. Then what happens? People simply sit. They don't want to get up. They complain, grumble, murmur, and oh, why it happened. Uh, I thought everything would go well. Why is this happening? You should not stop. Get up and move forward. Go continuously and look to God. God will do. Don't procrastinate. Procrastination destroys your life. Get up. Move forward. You should continue. A believer in the Lord should continue to move forward for the glory of God. Overcome its practice. That's what Joseph did it. He overcame distraction. He never procrastinated. He always moved forward. That's what the heroes of the Bible have done with. And the fifth one I wanted to enter is ask yourself questions. When things go wrong with you, ask questions yourself. What happened? Why did it happen? How can I overcome this next time? Is it the end of my life? No, not at all. You need to get up and ask questions to yourself. I said, yes, I can do. I can get up. I can move on. Ask questions to yourself. That's what Joseph did in the Bible. He never stopped. He moved forward. Ask questions to yourself. And number six, I advise you, volunteer and shadow someone. Laziness is the biggest problem and the number one enemy to destroy your life. If you don't have any work, volunteer. Get into the mission of God. And do something. When you are depressed, what happens? You don't feel like doing anything. You don't feel like talking to anyone. You don't feel like going out. You don't pick up the phone calls. That kills your life. That kills your life. 
get up and move forward. Ask questions. And uh, you know, life is not everything that uh, what you see, but there is something beyond what you cannot see. So volunteer. Get into some kind of work. When God created the entire universe, the first commandment God gave to Adam is, Adam, take care of this garden. The first commandment God gave to humanity is, do some work. We all need to be busy doing something. That will recreate us. There is a lot of recreation work. We are designed to work. So that's what the Bible clearly says. If somebody is not working, even he's not you know, worthy to have a meal. So we need to work hard. And the seventh one, answer the door. The final word I want to say, answer the door. You must take opportunities when they are present to you. Nothing will come to your door and uh, you know, you don't expect that something will come on your side and you will be pressurized to go there. In some extraordinary cases, this may happen, but not so with all the people. God has given instinct and knowledge and uh, God shows some doors and we need to keep on seeking, knocking and asking. That's what Jesus said. Ask, seek and knock. You ask God what you want, what God wants you to do. When you ask in prayer, don't simply sit like an idol. You seek to make an and make some attempts. Move forward. Try to get into the action and knock the door. You need to move on. We need to move on. That's what Joseph did in the prison. He never simply uh, be an idol. If he would not have opened his mouth and talked to people, he would never, never got help. He would have never came out of the dungeon. He voluntarily went to people and he asked both of them, what happened? Why are you so gloomy? They said, oh, we had dreams. Both of them shared their dreams. The first person and he shared the dreams and Joseph interpreted and said, you are, you are going to take back the cup and you are going back to the palace. He did not stop there. He keep on knocking the door. He said, hey, hey, ma, hey guy, I help you to understand this dream. Can you do a favor for me? When you get into the job, when you are back to the palace, please remember me. Share something good about me to the official. I'll do whatever you want or you can do and take me out of this dungeon because I am thrown here for a reason that I haven't done it. You know, we keep on moving people. Ask people, talk to people. And you know, unless you ask, you can, you will not be helped. Of course, God does some extraordinary cases. In some extraordinary cases, some exceptional cases, He will help. But God expects that we should take steps to get into the, the business of asking, asking, ask, and answer the door. And finally, I want to give you a final thought: No action is an action in. And of itself. If you don't know what to do, well, you know, just be in the presence of God. Even if you don't know, to, that itself is an action. Be still and know the Lord. And the Bible says in um, Isaiah chapter 40, verse 30, you know, be still and know that I am God. Isaiah 40, where you read, you know, God calls you to be still in his presence. God gives you strength. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youth grow tired and weary and young men stumble and fall. Isaiah chapter 40 was 31. I'm reading it for you. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on eagle, soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Are you feeling that you are fainting today? Do you think that you are going to fall? 
Let me encourage you. You will not fall. You will not faint. You wait in the presence of God. God will raise you and He will open doors for you. Let me pray for you. My friend, let me tell you. God is on your side and He will open a door for you. Believe it. And close your eyes and I pray for you. Heavenly Father, I pray that your grace be on my viewer today. Bless your child. Open the doors for your child. And encourage, motivate, and uh, let this child of yours may find meaning in life. See the wonders of God. I pronounce your peace, your blessing, with all the authority that I receive from heaven in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. I pray and I release the blessings of God. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Amen. Keep watching. God bless you and have a blessed day.